to us. It could be to somebody else. It could be through a dream. It could be to, through a vision. We, as people, have a tendency of leaning to our own understanding and perceiving that thing as if, oh, that wasn't God. That's them. Because of our thought and the way that we feel about that person in the inside. And yet we pretend or put on a face mask as if it's all okay. When in actuality, in our heart, it's not. So we disregard it. In the red zone, in the danger zone, not knowing and knowing. It is just what it is because I want to do just what I want to do. I'm going to act just how I want to act. I'm going to think just how I want to think. I'm going to feel just how I want to feel. It is me. What about me? See, God got a plan for us that is good and not evil. And so when we as individuals do not want to acknowledge these things on our own openly and face our own mess and our own foolishness, then he will send other people. He will send other people to us so that we can recognize our error. Because we think and we believe that we're doing that thing right or we're acting that right. Or we have a justification for acting that way towards somebody else. And so in us disregarding these things, what we need to understand and what we, we need to realize is that that individual that God is sending to you is concerned about you. In your spiritual state. Your relationship with God. Your relationship with people. The way you act. What you doing and how you doing it. Because God says that he have no delight that any of his people should perish. Not even the very wicked. So if you being that bad person with that wicked thought and that evil heart. He's still concerned about us. Listen to this. The potter's house. He wants us to put us to. He, he wants us to put ourselves in a state where he can put us together. He wants to make us. Because he knew from the very beginning. He knew from the very beginning that we was all messed up. That's why he gave us those commandments. That's why he gave us those laws and those statutes and those precepts. Because he knew we was messed up. He knew we was so messed up until he wanted to destroy us. And his very son said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's show a little bit more mercy on them. Let's give them some grace. Something that they don't even deserve. But give it to them. Because you made them for your pleasure. So in him making us for his pleasure, he also wants to make us to be just what he wants us to be and not what we think we should be or what we ought to be, but what God says we should be. Who are we? Who are we? We did not come into existence all because of what the scientists think or what they believe, but we came into existence because of the creator, and that is God. That is God. He's so concerned about us until he said he wants us to be concerned about one another. And if we see our brother and our sister overtaken in a matter, I'm trying not to get in my sermon. But I can't, I, I gotta give it to you the way he gave it to me today. I gotta give it to you. Because we need to understand and we need to realize that we all have fallen short. We all have thought we could have evil against an individual or against a person. And when a certain thing is said, we take that thing personal. Well, what I what he had me to tell y'all before, don't take it personal, make it personal. Don't take it personal, because if you take it personal, it causes you to have animosity and evil and all kind of bull crap inside of your heart against the individual who came to you on the instructions of God. So don't take it 
personal, make it personal. Because of everything that he is doing is simply trying to save our soul from perdition. And y'all all know that perdition is hell. There is a hell. Please understand that. And the Bible declares that it has enlarged itself all because of us and our wickedness and our evil heart. The thoughts that we have inside of our mind. The things that we do. The actions and reactions that we practice. All this stuff. All this stuff. All this stuff. I'm going to start it over so that y'all can really get it. And I want y'all to start writing all this stuff down. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shining, you all broke. We ain't got to stay the way that we are. Because he want to fix it. He want us to be in that place that he can accept us. to what she's saying, these words that she's saying. Because it's all my sermon today that he gave me for us. He want to put us back together. He want to put us together. If you broke it. for it to be just quiet for a second. And I want y'all to just reflect. Just for a minute. I want you guys to reflect on what you have done. How often you have done it. And what you are still doing now in your thoughts, in your mind, and even in the verbiage concerning others as well as God. Just for a second, just for a second. Disconnected.
I want you guys to literally think about that thing. Because it's so many times that we have done so many things towards one another. Say, even in our venting to other people, we have a tendency of slashing or degrading or making or making it seem as if that person is a bad person or they doing such a bad thing to us. Or saying a bad thing to us when in actuality they're simply just following the instructions of God. We, as people, we want to get into that place where we are acceptable <laughs> to God. But we be so concerned about being accepted of other people until, again, we take things so personal until it causes us to get into that place. Don't take it personal. Make it personal. Because if we make it personal, then we're going to be concentrating more on what God wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. How he wants us to do it. Please, listen to these words as you reflect. Because God don't want us to be into that state that we are in. That's why he sent his son Jesus. And we all have fallen short. We wonder why everything is shattered in our lives. Oh, you're going to know today because I'm going to give you the scriptures. And yet there is still hope because you ain't got to stay in that state. He want to put us back together. He want to do it. While we always trying to do it. Dear God in heaven, I'm coming to you on behalf of your people today, God. I'm asking you to cover us in your blood and hide us behind your cross, Father God, in the name of Jesus as we openly, Father God, confess some things on today, God. It's so many times, Father God, in the name of Jesus that we allow ourselves to fall deeper and deeper into that ditch of dissolution. But we don't want to go into that place of destitution, Father God. We want to be lifted and raised up in you, Father God. So we ask you to help us on today, God. We ask you to fashion us, Father God, for you are the potter and we are the clay. Oh God, help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus to accept your will and accept your way, Father God, because sometimes we just don't want to hear it because we don't want to accept it. And because we don't want to hear it, Father God, not even from you and even as you sing your people, Father God, we don't want to accept it and we simply disregard it. I'm asking you to give us a heart of acceptance on today, Father God, that we may be able to come to you, Father God, as white as snow. Because you want to cleanse us, Father God. You want to wash us over, Father God. You don't want us to continue to walk into self-righteousness you don't want us to continue, Father God, to think and believe that we got it all together, Father God, when actuality we don't. You don't want us to continue, Father God, to go to people, Father God, and open up our mouths, Father God, and put our mouths on the men and the women of God. Lord, but you want us to be into a place, Father God, that is pleasing in your sight. Because, Lord, you say you created us, Father God, for your pleasure, Father God, but we're not pleasurable in your sight, Father God, because of our actions and our ways, Father God, because of our reactions Father God, in our perception of things. So I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God. Open up our understanding. Touch each and every individual on today, Father God. The ones that's here, Father God. The ones that's on the way, Father God. The ones that need to come and they want, Father God. The ones, Father God, that desire to come and they can. Lord, I'm asking you to help us on today and open up our minds, Father God. Open up our hearts, God, that we may be able to accept your truth. Open up our understanding, Father God, that we will not be in that place of being in a stupid state. Lord, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, that we will not continue to imagine these wild devices and evilness against one another, Father God. Because you said, Father God, that we are helpers one to another. So, Lord, I'm asking you to help us on today, God. Lift up the hung down head and a broken heart on today, God. Lift your people up in your will and your way, Father God, that they may be obedient unto you, God. Let your people submit themselves unto you, Father God. Let your people bow down unto you on today, Father God. When you can simply make us do it all, God. But you want us to come willingly, Father God, and openly, Father God, to seek you, Father God, with everything that's inside of us, Lord. But I'm asking you to help us on today because it's kind of hard, God. It's 
It's kind of hard for your people, God, because of the things that they see and what they hear. It's kind of hard, Father God, because of the seeds that was planted down inside of them, God. It's kind of hard, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we want to do what we want to do, how often we want to do it, Father God, and when we want to do it. So I'm asking you to help us on today, God, that our will will line up with your will, Father God. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not have these imaginations of, against one another, Father God, that's causing us, Father God, to get out of right standing with you, Father God. Lord, you are the pot and we are the clay. Fix us up the way you want us to be, Father God. Make us into what you want us to be, God. Oh, God, instill the ingredients inside of us, Father God, that we can have some more than dignity about ourselves as well as one another, Father God. Let us be more mindful, Father God, that you chasing those that you love, Father God. Let us know, Father God, that you don't want us to perish and that you will give us warning before the destruction comes. Uh, help us out today, Father God, to open ourselves up to you, Father God, in totality. Help us out today, Father God, to simply bow down to you, Lord, uh, that we may be able to accept your will for our lives. Oh, God, cleanse us out today, God. Cleanse our minds out today, Lord. Cleanse us. <laughs> because we need you like we never needed you before, Father God. <laughs> and even though we think Father God, that we got enough information, even though we think that we got enough of your word, even though we think, Father God, that we've been in it long enough, even though we may think these things, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you said that hell has enlarged itself because of us, God. Help us not to be us, God, that you can be you inside of us, Lord. Make us over, God. Fashion us, God. Redeem us even the more, God. Lift us up in your will, God. Help us, God. Oh, God. Because we need your help. We need your teaching. We need your direction. We need to be restored into our proper positions in you, Father God. While we try to position our own selves. While we go where we want to go and do what we want to do and act the way we want to act. Tear down that self-righteousness on today, Father God. And let your will be done within your people. Help us on today, Father God, to be untangled, Father God. And I need our conceived from the yoke of bondage. Help us, God. Complete the work that you've begun in this Jesus. Saturate us on today. Saturate us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your will will be done in our lives, Jesus. We need you. We need you like we never needed you before, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because our hearts, God, is weary. It's weary. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. And we are helping him to a place. We are so prideful and so stubborn. We are just messed up. We are just messed up. The name of the sermon today is Vessels of Clay with Added Grace. The Lord told me that we are so flamboyant. He says that we are so flamboyant within our own selves and in our own ways. And I want to make sure that y'all know what that word means. Flamboyant is marked by or given to. Hold on, let me put my back. Flamboyant is marked by or given to strikingly elaborate or colorful display or behavior. It's likely to attract attention because that's what we want. He said we are so flamboyant in our ways and in our actions until we forget 
so many different other things that he designed us to be. And that he designed us to act. The name of the sermon today is Vessels of Clay with Added Grace. Vessels of Clay with Added Grace. We do not allow God to do what he want to do inside of us because we do what we want to do as often as we want to do it and whenever we want to do it. We are not allowing ourselves to, to be available for God to do what he designed to do inside of us. God can easily make each and every last one of us do it. Just like that. But he wants us to willingly, willingly open up our hearts unto him. The name of the sermon again is Vessels of Clay with Adam the Grace. We're going to go to Jeremiah 18. Let's go to Jeremiah 18. His Bible's up under the chairs. Jeremiah 18. I want you guys to get yellow sheets of paper and red pens. And I want you guys to write down any and everything that you think or believe you have done, said, thought, or spoken against somebody. So many times we don't be mindful that we do these things because we think that we're doing them to defend our own selves and to help our own selves. within our thoughts and our minds and even in our mouths against one another. He's been talking to me about this thing because he wants us to understand that this is not how he designed us to be. The name of the sermon today is Vessels of Clay with Added Grace. And I'm just going to pause this going to pause this because I'm going to start it. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, see I'm going to start from the top because I don't want nobody to miss anything that was said before you got here. The Lord says that we as people have a tendency of erring towards him and towards one another. He says we do these things because we think and believe that we have to justify or defend ourselves against other people that have offended us. We feel like we gotta defend ourselves. It could be in word, it could be in 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 in, in a thought, it could even be in an action or a reaction to something that was done and even said to us. The Lord says that we disregard so many things that he said to us. 
the Lord can come to you on his very own and say something to you. And it don't have to be audible. You can feel it in your spirit. He can tell you in a dream or a vision. Or even simply send somebody to you. Because a lot of times when God comes to us and starts talking to us, assuring us certain other things, especially about ourselves, we don't want to accept it. It could be good or bad. Because when he starts telling us good stuff about ourselves, we say, we think it's far-fetched or it's too good to be true. If he tells us something bad about ourselves, we don't want to accept that because, oh no, that ain't me. And I only did it because of this. You, we justify our reasons for turning a deaf ear to God. This is what he said to me today. We don't take heed and we have a tendency of disregarding it all. Especially if he sends somebody to us. And it ain't what we want to hear. That good stuff. Oh, that's just them. I know God didn't say that. They saying that because they don't like me. Or they doing that or that. Or God didn't say that. That ain't me. And it causes that person that God used to come to you to feel some type of way. So when I say that, I don't mean in a way where um, they may hate you, but in a way like, they don't, what make them think that I'm gonna come to them and say that? Or why, I, first and foremost, we as people need to understand, we don't just sit up and just think about an individual all day long unless we love them like that. Okay. Right. Don't we? I mean, seriously. People, I, I have made this statement to folk before. I'd be like, what make you think that you're so important that I'm thinking about you all day to come to you to tell you something that does say the Lord? What, what make you believe that I'm just sitting there all day. Oh, that, that. What made you believe that I'm gonna come? I'm gonna just start saying some things and conjuring up because ninety percent of the time we don't even. How many times you don't went to one of your kids and told them something that the Lord showed you or you felt in your spirit, and then they may have got angry with you or did not want to accept it. How many times you don't went to your mama or your, or your friends? or the, How many times you don't went to family members? Or people that you love or care about and you say so and they get mad at you and, they, and then they start calling other folk venting and talking and saying all manner of evil against you. God don't do that. God wouldn't say that. Or they don't work. That was just them. Or they only saying that because they know this. Or they only doing this. Don't that make you feel some type of way? It makes you feel some type of way. Because you sitting up there like, I'm telling them this for their own good, but they think that I'm trying to make them be feeling little or trying to make them... Oh, Okay, wait a minute. I didn't even know that they was doing that. So why would I? I didn't even know that that's how that happened. So first and foremost, I don't even see you or talk to you. And so if I call you or tell you or see you and tell you something that the Lord said, you mean, oh, no, I did that. She must have been talking to someone. I don't talk to nobody. I don't see them. It makes her feel some type of way. It makes her feel like, oh, okay. You know what? I, it just is what it is. And so, even in the midst of you feeling that type of way and you saying it is what it is, it's still something urging you to go back to that person again. I'm come, I, to, you know what? I'm not trying to get in your business and I ain't trying to tell you what to do and I ain't trying to stop you from doing that. But I just got to say, I, 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 I just want to tell you such, 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 such. And then that, I, I'm not taking your advice. And they mind, ain't it? How they gonna tell me this and they such stuff? That, for, first and foremost, I don't wanna keep coming to you. Because in actuality, you're gonna do what you wanna do. How you wanna do it is off the air when you wanna do it. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna keep doing it. You're gonna keep doing it. 
you're going to keep doing it. It's often that all the way up. It's often that you want to do it and when you want to do it. Don't, don't leave your head down. You ain't sleeping. You, you, we, because this is what we do. And this is how we do it. And so the Lord was talking to me about that. He said, let's go to the book. Let's go to the book. Isaiah, no, Jeremiah 18. Grab a Bible, Rasan. Go to Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. We're going to start from the top. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord said, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrote a work on the wheels. What do wrote mean? It's worked into shape by artistry or effort. It's a process for use. It's beating into shape by tools. So the work, see, God got to do some things inside of us. Wait, I, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Let, let, let me finish. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Now, what is a vessel? A vessel is a container such as a, a cask. And y'all know that's one of them, them liquor bottles or them wine bottles out of skin that they be using. A bottle, a kettle, a cup, or a bowl for holding something. That's natural. Spiritually, it's a person into whom some quality such as grace is infused. And so what is grace? It's unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification. It's to make more attractive adding something that is beautiful or becoming. So he got to work some things inside of our vessels because we are his vessel. And what is that great? To, to infuse something is to cause a person to become filled or saturated with a certain quality or a principle. And that grace, that grace is unmerited divine assistance given to us. Because he knew that we all messed up. God knew that we was all messed up from the very beginning. That's why he told us we were born in sin and shape in the He knew we was all messed up. And that's why he wanted to destroy us. But Jesus said, wait a minute, hold it. Don't destroy me because you created them for your pleasure. So in order for us to be pleasurable in his sight, he got to be, we got to allow him to be the power. And we the vessel and the clay. And he got to fix us. So what is clay? Clay ain't nothing but dirt. And if you add water to it, you can fashion it. So, let, let, let me Clay. It's the human body as distinguished from the spirit. I'm talking spiritual things today, y'all. The set of qualities that makes a person or a group of people or a thing different from others. I told y'all when I was in college, I, I, I wanted to spin the wheel. That's what I wanted to do. And so when every time I won a class, I'd be so excited. Because I know that I'm going to make something and it's going to be distinguished from everybody else's. I just don't know what it is that I'm going to make. So every time I got there, I would sit down in my seat and then the, the wheel of it would spin. But the only way that it could spin is if I take my feet and keep mashing down on it. And so... In the midst of me getting ready to take my feet and measure, I couldn't just walk up to it like this because I'd be too far from it. I couldn't sit in front of it because my knee. So I had to open my legs and then scoot up. So when you open up your legs, that means you exposing some things, right? See, it's some things that got to be exposed and opened inside of us in order for us to be com complete. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. What do marred mean? To ruin or diminish the perfection or wholeness of. It's something that spoils the appearance or completeness of a thing. We are all marred. We are all marred in some form or some fashion. We, none of us, have got it all together. Listen to this. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. So every time I sat down in front of that wheel and I tried to spin it, I had to, I put the clay on there and it was just a little bit of water that would squirt out every
every time. And so, as it, come here, come here. Stand here and hold this mic to my mouth. Don't move it, okay? And so, every time I, 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 I put my clay on there, and the water, I had, to, I had my legs open, and I had to push that thing, and I had to shape it. Now, the faster you spin the wheel, the more fashioning it, it will be, and yet it'll flop over. So I had to start all over again. Because I couldn't spin it too fast. Because if I spin it too fast, too much water is going to come out and it's going to become like mud. Okay? So in the midst of it, as I was spinning, because I had to use two feet, one feet for the water and one feet for the, for the, for the, for the make it spin. I had to fashion it. And so in fashioning, I was shaping it. You, you shape it into the, what you want it to be. Okay? So you can make a big bowl. Or the more, the more pressure you put on it, you can make that bowl smaller. And then it's, it's going to close up at the top. And you push it a little bit more in and add a little bit more water. It's going to spread back out. And then it's going to go. You notice all the different um, um, decorations that we have in our house? They, they had to spin a wheel to make that. Nothing was made without spinning the wheel. Y'all. And you had to use your hand for it. Go see. Listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. Notice I said, if I spin it too fast, because we so microwave, but we want everything right quick. Or if I put too much of this in it at that one time, it's, it's, it's going to just flop over. And then I got to start all over again. How many times you done fail and you just got to start all over again? Because we have to start all over again. Listen to this. And then I went down to the potter's house and behold, the rope a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again in other vessels as seemed good to the potter to make it. So the more you do it, the better it's going to be. That's that perfection of it. The more you do it, the, the prettier it's going to look. Okay, listen to this. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel. Cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant... I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plan it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. See, this is what we don't get. This is what we don't get. God has already ordained and already have designed and fashioned our lives to be the way that he wanted to be. Okay? He already did that even before we came into existence. But the mistake comes in is when we do not willingly allow him to do so as he pleased to do inside of our lives and we do what we want to do. He said, just as that potter is, that I, I'm the potter and you are the clay. So if I speak evil on your life, then that's what I spoke. Because of the evil that you do. And what is the evil that you do? Anything that's contrary to the word. But if we repent, he said he'll turn. And he won't allow that thing to come. But if he speak good over our lives, and then we start doing evil, he say he ain't got, he go, he going to turn. And that good thing that he spoke, it ain't going to happen. Listen to this. Why am I saying all this? I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Now there will go speak to 
to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and say, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Listen to this. What is a device? To form in the mind by new combinations of applications of ideas or principles to plan to obtain or bring about. Now therefore go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And they say, There is no hope. Now listen. They, okay, let me finish reading first. But we will walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone, do the imaginations of his evil heart. Therefore, thus said the Lord, ask ye now among the heathen, who have heard such a thing? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field, or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in the way not cast up. To make their land desolate. And what is desolate? It's sadness from lack of companionship or separation from others. It's left unoccupied or unused. It's showing the efforts of abandonment and neglect. It's joyless. It's barren. It's lifeless. It's hopelessness. It's comfortlessness. It's forsaken. It's causing or marked by an atmosphere lacking in cheer. Okay, so what is the Lord saying? What is he saying? We as people, we do what we want to do, how we want to do it, and when we want to do it. And then, when stuff start happening in our lives, we want to say, oh, this happened in the... I got to give y'all examples, y'all. I already know that. Me. So, and this is anybody. This is anybody in here, okay? I just gave y'all an example. The Lord will have you to go and tell somebody something. Because the Bible declares that warning comes before destruction. Okay? Let me read a little bit more before I give y'all these examples. I'm going to give y'all the whole thing. I'm going to give y'all the whole thing. Okay? I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. What is calamity? A disastrous event marked by great loss and lasting distress and suffering. A sudden violent event that brings about great loss or destruction. A state of deep distress, distress or misery caused by major misfortune or loss. Then said they come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. Talking about the prophet. Now listen to this. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor the counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall even be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them, and to turn away thy wrath from them. So who is that? That's Jeremiah. He was one of the major prophets that the Lord kept sending to the people, kept sending to the people, and they hated his word. They disregarded everything that the Lord had had him say. They did not take heed to anything, and in the midst of it, they used their opinions, they verbiage, they um um what what you call it um. They um venting and all that stuff when they talking to other people to speak against the man of God. That's what they did. All because they wanted to justify their actions. The Bible declares that he is the potter and we are the clay. He don't want us to be like that. He don't want us to disregard what he's saying. He had me to send somebody a parable. He had me to send somebody a parable over the past week. And this was the parable here. God gives us parable in plain English. Just as he gave us parables in there. This is what he said. He said, if you go to the bank 
and you want to make a deposit in that bank. But that bank is closed. You can't make that deposit because the bank is closed. So what you wanted to deposit in that bank, you take those treasures and you take them back and you put them in a safe place until that bank is open for you to make that deposit. What do you think he was saying? That's the parable he told me to send to the person that believes, that believes that they are already understood and understand everything that God said and what God shows. What, what do you think they believe? What do you think they were saying? But it ain't easy like that. It ain't easy like that. So what do we do? We go and we, we start praying for them. We start laboring for them. Lord, open up their heart that they may be able to receive it. God, get them. Lord, Lord, take the scales off their eyes so they'll be able to see. God, go to them and tell them, Father God, how they erring and what they doing and how they doing it. Oh, Lord, they so disobedient and they so hard-headed. Lord, what, what, what am I... I mean, they, they talking about me. They they dogging me, Lord. They they saying all men are evil against me, God. They trying to slander me. They trying to defame. They trying to do all this different other stuff to me. So, Lord, what, what am I supposed to do now? I'm praying for him, Lord. I just want you to show your mercy. I want you to show your mercy. And this is what Jeremiah was doing. Jeremiah was like, shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have did the pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. I came to you, Lord, on their behalf. And look how they look, look what they saying. Look how they thinking. Look what they telling folk. Look how they treat me. Look how they acting. Look at I came on their behalf, Lord. Lord, and you done already told me to go to them. You done sent me to them, Lord, and you done told me to tell them that you the potter, we the clay. Come on, he want to fix you up. Now, when he's sending that person to that other person and telling you, you know what? The Lord said, you got to stop doing this, and you got to stop doing that, and you got to try to do this. And try. Why are you mad at me? Because I'm coming to try to help you from going to hell. Oh, God ain't say that. They said that because I did this. Or because of, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's go to Galatians. Let me tell you how God don't want us. And, I, and, and I'm going to play some of this stuff. Because I want y'all, I want y'all to get it. We will not give him what he want us to have. We, we. We allowing our own selves to miss stuff. Are you saying, Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me? Because he didn't already had me to read. I didn't spoke a good thing over your life. But if you're doing what I tell you not to do, I'm not going to let that good thing happen for you. I done spoke an evil thing over your life. But if you turn from doing that evil thing, I'm going to let that good thing happen for you. you. He said we disregard it and we don't take heed in it. And so we keep going back to that. But how many times you did it, girl? Keep going back to that person. Keep saying it. Be that. We don't want to give up on it. Even though we get frustrated. What? 
Was not Jeremiah frustrated? Even though we get frustrated and see like, you know what, I'm going to finish over the end. I, hey, I'm just going to let them do them. Because they disregard everything that the Lord said. Ha! He can come to you yourself, baby. It could be in a dream. It could be in a vision. You could just be sitting there and the next day you know something to pop up in your head and you be like, you didn't, you didn't conjure that up. You didn't conjure it up. Because God deals with everybody differently. He said, I will not leave you ignorant. He said, I have no delight that any of my people should perish, not even if every way. So even if you act acting wicked, even if you think you're wicked, even if you do it wicked, even against somebody else, because you think that if I do that, it'll benefit me, because we always get into that place, oh, it's all about me and man, or oh, what can I get, or what can I do to benefit me? Because that's what we think about. And I wouldn't give a rest to who you is. Whatever you're doing, Lord, don't do it without me. But he is. So, because he said he wants us to be concerned about one another. Come on, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. He wants us to be concerned about one another. So, don't you talk about me. Don't you get on that phone and get to gossiping about me. Don't you get to thinking all men are evil in your mind and your thoughts about me. You better stop treating me all evil and disrespectful. You better stop doing all these things. Because the Bible declares in Galatians... If I see you overtaken in a fault. Because we're supposed to be helpers one to another. I'm going to come to you and I'm, I'm not making this up. Galatians chapter 6. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. So because you are blinded to your foolishness, you are blinded to your wickedness, you are blinded to your evil, and because God has allowed me to see what you're doing, how you're doing it, and as often as you're doing it, I'm not coming to you talking about you. I'm not coming to you trying to make you feel so low. I'm not coming to you as if I got it all together. I'm not coming to you as if, oh, okay, yeah, you going to hell tonight. I ain't coming to you like that. I'm coming to you telling you what the Bible declares, and when I come to you and I tell you these things, you want to disregard them. You want to disregard them because you want to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, and as often as you want to do it. And in doing so, you are going to disregard any and everything that God said because you feel like you already there, or I know, or I know, and you don't know nothing. What I know is that we will set our own selves to Him. Said the Lord. He says that hell has enlarged itself. All because of us. All because of our actions. All because of the way we think about one another. So if I see you overtaken in that sin for world, that sinful thought, that sinful act, if I see that you are overtaken in that thing, then I'm supposed to come to you. This is what I'm supposed to do. Brother, if a man is overtaken in his fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. So again, I don't pose to come to you and tell you this or say that to you or say this to you all because you may think and believe that I'm saying it because I know or I'm saying it because I feel like I got it all together or I'm walking around with an S on my chest or I'm self-righteous or I'm this or that. No, that's the way you see it because baby, the Bible declares you got to be holy. And so because you see holiness inside of me, you made it. You mad and you don't want to accept what God wants to say. You don't want to accept it and you be disregarding it all. You won't let them make you. You won't let them fashion you. You won't let him put the ingredients inside of you that he has already designed. He already designed that if I see some things that's going on inside of you, which I am spiritually discerning these things. Because, baby, we allow our carnality to get confused and intertwined with our spirituality. Oh, yeah, I didn't need it before. I don't know about nobody else. I, I confess my foolishness. Because I want God to change me and fix me. I want to do that thing right. 
I don't want to get into that place of it. Sometimes I'm holy and then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I love them and sometimes I won't. Because the Bible says if you love me, you're going to do what I tell you to do. That's what he's saying. You're going to do what I tell you to do. You're going you're gonna to restore them in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tilted. I just said that. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So if I see you work, then guess what? I have told y'all a hundred times. I want to grab any and everybody I can and we all going to bust down heaven doors together. Just like God don't have no delight that any of his people should perish, I don't either. I don't want to see nobody perish. I don't want to see nobody going through and constantly going through and going through. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I just said all that. Because ain't none of us got it all together. We may think of walking in self-righteousness and pride and, or no, and whooping other folk with the word of God. Because that's what so many people do. That's what so many people do. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in others. For every man shall bear his own burden. <laughs> Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches and all things. So it's my job. If God have taught me something and showed me something, then I am supposed to help you that it may edify you, that I may help save your soul. And that's each and every last one of us in here. We, we always take it personal. We take it so personal. When in actuality, we just want what's best for our kids. We want what's best for our loved ones. We want what's best for that person that's... You see what I'm saying? But folk don't look at it like that. They don't look at it like that because of the middle state that they are in. And what is that? Carnality. They're not looking at it spiritually. And then... See, if you read further on down in Jeremiah 18, please study that whole chapter. It says that that person that you go to, they disregard everything and then they get to wagging their head and point their finger at you. At you. And the only thing that you are doing is trying to simply help them that they may take heed. Lord, order our steps today. We want to be worthy. I don't want to be doing all this stuff and then I don't, I don't want to die my works under me. I don't want God to speak these promises over my life and because of my sin, my wickedness, my actions, and the things I do are simply cause me to what? Just like I disregard him, he'll disregard the good thing. I just read it to y'all. We as people, That we would get into that place of stability in you. Yellow sheets of paper, red pen. Write down all that stuff. You already know what's going on in your world, in your life, and what you do, how you do it, or when you do it. Ain't nobody got to come and tell you nothing. When God comes to you and tell you these things, don't disregard them. Whether he's doing it to you in a dream, in a vision, he's talking to you. Or baby, you could be riding by and you could read a sign. And that sign will start convicting you. you what was it? Conviction is real. Condemnation is of the enemy. He want to condemn you and make you feel like you are good. What do the Bible say? The Bible says that we all have fallen short. We all are tempted. Just because I see you in error, I see you doing something that's contrary to the will or to the way of God, it does not mean that I'm supposed to come and bash you. What? What is that all about? Been there, done that. I, I, how many times I wanted to do right and couldn't do right? What do Paul say? That that I want to do, I can't do. But that that I don't want to do, that I do. Because it's always present. Smack in your face. Lord, I don't want to fornicate not. Lord, let me tell you. God should you make me shoot. That that I want to do, I do not. But that that I don't want to do, that I do. I don't want to be 
acting like that and cussing folk out and doing, being mean and acting. But Lord, I, 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 and then something happened and then it happened. Then you're doing it. That, that I want to do, I don't want to do. I don't want to be thinking like that about people, God. I don't want to be acting like that. I want to be different. I want, he said, I am the potter. And you are the, let me fix you and let me form you. Let me make you right. That's why I gave you that grace. I gave you that grace and I know you don't deserve it, but I gave it to you because I love you. I did not give it to you for you to keep being a substance abuser. What's a substance abuser? You're abusing my mercy that I give you new every day. But because I know you already messed up, I'm the God that's going to give you another chance. But I need you to come to me and just repent and then say, Lord, help me. Because it be hard. The flesh never gets saved. It never gets saved and it's going to always rise up. It's going to always do that thing that it don't need or don't want to do. It's going to always make you want to do that thing that it don't need to be done to it. Oh, I, I know. The Bible says that the just fall seven times, yet he is not cast out. He's not. The Lord wants to be our pattern. So whatever he's doing, we don't want him to do it without us. No, ain't none of us got it together. No, we all have fallen short. We all messed up. That's why he gives us that brand new mercy every day. You know what? I'm going to have to get them a mercy every day. Because if I just get them one mercy, then they not move. Jesus. I, ain't nobody going to heaven. <laughs> ain't none of us going to heaven if he don't give us a brand new mercy every single day. Because he know it's hard for us. The flesh never gets saved. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. That thing I want to do, it's hard for me to do. That thing I don't want to do, I do it all the time. I don't want to have no bad attitude, but it, things just irks me. It, it is. I ain't gonna say nothing. I don't say nothing. We got holes in our tongue and our jaws and our lips and we bleeding real bad. Because we don't want to say nothing. But then keep on, keep on, keep on. Then it pull off and just roll out, baby. Did you hear what I say? We need some help. All that stuff that we have down inside of us. Our vessels. We are, the, we are the clay. God is the potter. So we just need his help, y'all. It's prayer time. I want y'all to write all that stuff down. I want y'all to write all, get them yellow sheets of paper and red pens and write down all that stuff that you know that got you in that place. That, that place of unforgiveness. That place of hard to get past. That place to, 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 to prevent you from, from holding your peace. Sinning. We, we be so worried about sinning against one another. How about sinning against God? Because he the one that can put us in heaven or hell. Give her your paper red pens and let her know what's going on. We as people. We as people. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all things. Be not deceived. God is not mine. Because so many times when the Lord sends somebody to us, we don't want to sell nothing. And then when we go to other people and say another certain other things and they try to say something different. Don't you know if God spoke it, it is so. It is going to happen. But if we turn from our weakness and if we turn from our evil ways and actions, then he will overturn that thing. I just read it. Our scriptures came from Jeremiah 18 in, turn, in entirety. Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 6. Verses 1 through 10. 
as your rightness of them. We want him to be the potter. We want him to fix us up the way that we need to be fixed up. Because we cannot do it on our own. We need some help. Yes, we sin. Yes, we fall short. But he give us that brand new mercy. He give us opportunity, ample opportunity to repent and turn from our wicked ways. He want us to embrace him. He want us to embrace his ways. And yes, it is hard. The Bible says if we see our brothers or our sister overtaken in the fort. So stand in the gap for somebody. Write their name down. You ain't got to write down their fault or what you think they doing. Write their name down. And when I sit up here and tell you, God is not a God of error. He's a God of perfection. He's a God of wholeness. Let's not disregard what the says, Lord. Let's not disregard the things that the Lord has telling us or he shows us or he gives us. Let's not disregard these things because if we disregard these things, it causes us to fall into that place of condemnation. Let's not disregard these things. And it'd be easy for us not to take heed to it. So please, write this stuff down. Write these things down. Write these things down. That we may be able to get some help inside of our lives. That we may be able to get some change inside of our lives. That things may be able to overturn for us. We want to write all this stuff down. The people who came in, please, Lisa, get them yellow sheets of paper and red pens and let them know what the Lord said to us concerning what we need to write down. I love you guys so much, and I hope that it was something said that you may be able to understand that He is the potter and we are the clay. We don't want to be walking around trying to whoop folk with the word of God. But we just want to simply speak the truth. Because we all have fallen short. We all have fallen short. Thank you, Jesus. The name of the sermon was vessels of clay with added grace. He gives us that grace something that we do not even deserve. And yet he gives it to us because he loves us so much. Thank you, Jesus, for that grace and that brand of mercy. We don't want to get into that place of despair. A destitution. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. He want to put us back together. He don't want us to stay in that state. to be in that condition of lost hope. Write down all these things. I wouldn't give a rest to tell what it is. Thank you, Jesus. He's talking about a broken heart. He's talking about the things that's not going right in your life. He's talking about the situations that's going on in your job, in your home, in your family. He's talking about what's going on inside of your bodies and your minds. He's talking about it all. He want to put us all together again. 
It's some things that we go through because of our disobedience, and yet it's some things that we go through because he is elevating us. It's some things that we go through because of our, our stubbornness. Whatever it is that we go through, it was already predestined and preordained even before we came into existence. It did not happen by chance. There is no coincidence. It ain't no such thing as good luck or bad luck. You either blessed or you cursed. We so superstitious. Put us back together, God, as we write these things down to you. Help us on today, God. Let us be honest, even within our own self. Write down that thought that you have, evil or wicked against somebody, because they offended you, they came up against you, they did something to you, they said something about you. Write that stuff down, because God don't want our minds and our hearts to be in that state. He want to fix us right. He want us to be right. Yes, it's hard to forgive. Yes, it's hard to simply forget. Oh, Jesus, it's hard to forget stuff. Especially when it's sting and dig so deep. Our lives are broken and they shattered. Put us together, God. As we write these things down to him, the yellow paper represents the sun and the red pen represents the blood. It's time for us to be free from our own thoughts, our own minds, our own selves, our own actions or reactions. It's time for us to open up ourselves that God may be able to enter in. That Jesus' blood can simply set us free and make us whole. We in bondage. We got balling chains around our ankles and we dragging them. Because we don't want to be loose from the stuff because we don't want to forgive. We got grudging and vengeful hearts. He don't want us to be like that. He said, if I come to you and I send somebody to you and I give you warning about some things. He said, don't disregard it. He said, take heed to it. Because that evil thing that I say is going to come upon you because of your disobedience and because of your stubbornness. He said, I overturn it if you repent. And that good thing that I spoke to you and I said that I was going to bring to pass. If you turn to do evil, he said, I won't allow that to happen for you. I won't allow it to benefit you. It's all written. I just read it. Jeremiah chapter 18. I ain't making this stuff up. He wants us to be delivered from our own selves, our own thoughts, our own actions and reactions. He wants us not to be in that state that causes hell to continue to enlarge itself all because of us in our ways. Help us, Lord. We want to write down that stuff. Write down the name of that person that ever offended you and then ask God to help you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, God. Not to have a grudge against that person. Not to have animosity. Not to be angry and bitter, Father God. Help us, God. Not to think evil or go and try to vent to somebody else and turn into a gossiping session. Put us back together again, God, because you said that if I see my brother and my sister overtaken in the fall, I'm supposed to go to them so that they can be back restored into their proper position in you. God, we want to stay positioned in you. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, because you say you are the potter. So all this stuff that we got down inside of our hearts, God, I want you to lift it up out of us, Father God. Because we can't do it on our own. Because that thing that we want to do right, God, it's hard for us to do right because evil is always present. Help us, Lord. That person that lied on you, huh, write their name down. See, we don't want to stand in the gap for the person who did something to us. The Bible declares that if the least of these was offended. It was best they put a milestone about their neck and cast themselves in the sea. So in other words, in other words, they might as well commit suicide if you are offended. So Lord, help us not to get so easily offended. Because if we get easily offended, God, we don't want your wrath to come down because your words say it's a terrible thing to fall under the wrath of God. It's a terrible thing. 
together, Bonnie. That person that broke your heart, that you thought you was over. Write their name now. That person that deceived, stole from you. Did not just take everything that you have. How about your dignity and your self-worth? We didn't forgot who we was in God. We doing and acting all kind of manner that's contrary to his will and to his way for our lives. We can't be free because we bound right up in here in our minds. It's like an instant replay. It's like we keep hitting rewind and go past a little more without rewind because we keep retracting in our thoughts and in our minds. We can't get over it. It'd be hard to get past it. How are we going to be able to get through it when we can't even get past it? You can't go through something if you don't get past it. You got to go past it first to get through it. But we don't want to face stuff. We don't want to face our own selves. What is our own self? Our fears. We don't want to face our fears. We're afraid to lose this, afraid to lose that, afraid not to have this and not to have that, afraid not to be loved, afraid to be loved. We're afraid of too much stuff. God is not a God of fear, but a love, a peace and of a sound man, a power love, peace and of a sound man. He is not a God of fear. The Bible declares that that very thing that you fear come upon you suddenly. Oh, you really scared me and going to anxiety, have to take nerve pills, got to rip and run to get all kind of foods that can't eat, can't sleep, all kind of stuff getting to happen to you. Because we brought them ball and chains, dragging them right on along with them. By the next, we went to wild back her because we carried that load. He said, come to me. He had me to preach last Sunday. Come to me. My burdens are light and my yoke is easy. We worried about the wrong stuff. He said, my problems to you, your problems to me is as a drop in the bucket of women. He said, they are nothing to me. Then he goes on a little further and said, they are less. Nothing. So I'm not trapped. They don't even exist. We just and took that molehill and made a mountain out of it. He said, come to me. We broke. We messed up. We messed up. I want y'all to write down all that stuff. Everything that is causing you to feel some type of way in your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. That thing that you ain't got no control over, write that stuff down. That thing that you cannot change, write that stuff down. That thing that you want to change, write that stuff down. That ache and that pain that's inside of your body, write all that mess down. That division that is caused inside of your life, your home, your mommy, your daddy, your sister, your brother. Anything, I wouldn't give a rest to tell what it is. That financial difficulty, that thing that's going on on your job. Ah, baby, any and everything, I wouldn't give a rest to tell what it is. We're talking about all the stuff. Write it down. And when you get through, I want y'all to put it on the altar, and then we're going to go into prayer. When you come up to the altar, I want you to just stop praying with yourself. Y'all ain't got to worry. If you want to stand in the gap for somebody, stand in the gap for somebody. If you know somebody else is going through some things, and yet they... Let me tell you something, baby. Sometimes you get to a place inside of your life until you be going through something. So you ain't even trying to pray and thinking about praying and don't even want to pray. Because you're trying to figure out where God is. Why you going through. He'll give you peace. What you need today. <laughs> what you need today from God. Let him be your pilot. Let him be your potter. What you want from him? The Bible declares they that come to him must come to him believing that he is. You got to believe that he is who he say he is. When you put that stuff on that altar, you got to believe that he's going to handle that thing. He's going to take care of it. He's going to fix it. He's going to settle it. Sign, seal, and deliver it. Don't come up here and not believe nothing. Because the Bible says that if you come to me and you don't believe what you come to me for, he said, don't expect nothing from me. 
So don't sit up there and say, I've been praying about it for two years and I still ain't got it. Did you believe it? Because if you didn't believe it, then baby, what makes you thought you was going to receive it? you got to first accept some things in order to receive some things. And if you don't accept the reality, I preached that two Sundays ago. Reality is acceptance. If you don't accept the reality of it, then how in the world is you going to receive it? We got options, y'all. You can either believe or not to believe. He said, them, whomsoever will, let them come. Willingly. Because he could simply make all of us bow down to him. But he wants us to willingly do it. So he wants you to willingly come to him and ask him for whatever you need. He said, the silver and the gold is mine. And the earth and everything that dwells there. He said, everything, we belong to him. So if you need some money, why is you getting on that phone trying to borrow something when God got it all? Why going to dead? Now when you go to him, you got to believe that he's going to be able to provide it for you. Because baby, he got a bank with no debt, no wit, no hype to it. It's never ending. We want to be ready. We want to have ourselves in that place where we'll be able to accept those good gifts. That's what we want. After y'all write that stuff down, I want y'all to come to the altar, please. It's praying time. Put that stuff on the altar. And then I want y'all to start praying for yourselves. Every child in the sanctuary, I would like for you to get on your knees, please, as we get ready to pray. I don't want you running around, going to the bathroom, coming to the altar. I don't want their child to do that. Get on your knees. Every child in the sanctuary. No child is going to be on the altar. I want y'all to be on y'all knees and I want y'all to be praying. If y'all children have wrote something down on the yellow sheet of paper, if y'all children wrote something down on the yellow sheet of paper, put it on the altar before you get on your knees because I'm praying for y'all stuff too. Because children got problems too. They got stuff that they're concerned about for real because it's starting our childhood. Children need to be set free too. Y'all come over here. The whole altar is available for you guys. y'all to write that stuff down and then I want y'all to come get on this altar please and just start praying for yourself while we wait for the other people to come just start praying for yourself you ain't got to wait for nobody else to come get on all kids on your knees Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we are pouring these things right now. We are pouring all this stuff to the Lord right now. We are pouring all this stuff that we have been carrying, not only just for our own self, but we are pouring all this stuff that we've been carrying for everybody else too. We are pouring all this stuff. We are pouring all this stuff. I want you guys to come to the altar and start praying for yourself. The ones who's coming in, please write down all this stuff. Write down all that stuff. Thank you. I want all children on your knees. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Thank you, Jesus. 
We want to write down all this stuff. Oh God, as we write these things down, Father God, and we allow ourselves to empty out unto you, Lord. Jesus, you know what we need. You know what we need, Father God. You know all the stuff, Father God, in the name of Jesus that inside of our hearts, inside of our minds, and inside of our bodies, Lord, that has caused us to be into this place of the Spirit, and has caused us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to be in this place, Father God. You have came and given your word, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we may be able, Father God, to outpour our hearts unto you, Father God, that you can fix this time, because we don't want to be in the state that we are in, God. We don't want to be in the condition that we are in, Lord, in the name of Jesus. But we want to be in the right standard with you, God. We, we want to be ready, Father God, in the name of Jesus when you call our name, Father God. We don't want to be in that place, Father God, in the name of Jesus that we got evil and wicked thoughts inside of our minds and our hearts towards one another. Oh, God, we want to get it right, God. We want to get it right, God. We want to get it right, God. We don't want to hold all this stuff. We don't want to hold all this stuff in, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That's causing us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, too, to be in that place of despair. That's causing us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, too, allow ourselves to have wicked and evil thoughts, God. We want to submit ourselves unto you, God. We want to submit any and everything unto you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we need you. We need your help on today, Father God. We want to be more mindful of our own selves, our own actions on today, Father God, because these things have caused us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to fall short. Lord, we have disregarded so many things that you have said to us, Father God. We don't want to continue to disregard the things that you say to us, Father God, because you are concerned about our souls, God. You are concerned about our spirits, Lord. And we need your help on today, Father God. We need your help right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because sometimes it just be hard for us, Father God, to to think right and to even act right, Father God. But we want to act right on today, Father God. We don't want to be evil and wicked towards one another, God. We don't want to disregard anything when you send your people unto us, Father God. But we want to open up our hearts and our minds unto you today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We want to be completing you, Father God. We're not completing you, Father God, and that's why we are in a place of destitution, God. We don't want to be in a place of hopelessness, Father God. We don't want to be comfortless, Father God. We don't want to be in a place of sadness and sorrow, Father God, thinking and believing, Father God, that things is not going to get better. But we want things to get better in our lives, Father God, but the only way that they're going to be able to get better, Father God, is if we submit our ways unto you, Father God. Give us a heart of acceptance, Lord, that we may be able to accept ourselves for being the evil and the wicked person that we are, Father God. That we will not be so selfish and we'll become more selfless. Lord, we want to accept, Father God, the things that you do and say to us to correct us, Father God, in our air, Father God. Not being offended by the things that you say, Father God, because you said in your word, God, that you chastise those that you love. Oh, God, we're crying out to you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, even as we stand in the gap for one another. Because in standing in the gap for one another, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, Lord, that we are severe infirmities. Of, uh, of one another, Father God. So I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, not to have these grudging spirits on today. Lord, remove any animosity out of our hearts on today, God. Let us not be so easily offended and taking everything personal, but yet making everything personal concerning you. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, God. Strip all these things out of our minds and our hearts, Father God, that make us and make us feel as if that we want to uh, have to get revenge amongst one another. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father. Father God, tear down the walls and the barriers of defeat inside of our minds on today, Father God, that we won't continue, Father God, to do what we want to do, how we want to do it, and as often as we want to do it. Oh God, we need your help on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We need you to help us right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, not to point our finger and wag our 
our heads at one another, Father God, because it is so easy for us to do it, God. Serving that spirit of self-righteousness of today, that we will not be all the time trying to whoop somebody with the Bible and your word, Father God. But Lord, give us what to say and even how to say it, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we will simply be set free, even from the own devices that we have inside of our own hearts and our own minds. Lord, sever that opinionistic spirit on today, Father God. Sever that gossiping spirit on today, Father God. And that spirit of complaining, Lord, we always complaining about any and everything, Father God. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God. Because, Lord, we ought to be grateful and content with the very things that you have already given us and what we have in our lives, God. Oh, God, but we seem to act as if it's just not enough, Father God. Sever any jealousy and enviousness and backbiting and tail bearing and covenants, lavishes, maliciousness, debate, hate, any bitterness, fornication, masturbation, any vain thinking, foul thinking, perverted thinking, and any hateful thinking. Sever the perversion of your word on today within your people, Father God, because there's so many of us, Lord, that we take your word, God, and we try to apply it to our lives and justify our wickedness and our evilness, God. I'm asking you to help us on today, God, that we will simply open up our hearts and our minds and say yes unto your will and into your way, Father God. Because you know what is best for us, Father God. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us not to lead to our own understanding, God. Uh, oh God, but we want to trust you in all our ways, God. I'm asking you to help us and complete us in your will and in your way, Father God. Remove the maskers and that chameleon attitude, Father God. That it will be exposed, Father God, that your truth, Father God, will make us free. Lord, you say that you are the potter and we are the clay. We asking you to make us something into something beautiful, God. We asking you to do it the way that you want to do it, God, and not the way that we think that we ought to be designed, God. Because you said that you made us for your own pleasure. Let us be a pleasure your vision and assignment to your Father God. We want to be a sweet savor unto you, Father God. So we are pouring ourselves right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus as we stand before your throne, God. We are out pouring ourselves right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we simply want to say yes to your will and to your way. We don't want to continue to walk backwards and side by side, God. But we want to walk forward, Father God. We don't want to be wavering that's concerning you, Father God, because you are a God of truth. Oh God, if you speak a word, God, we know without a shadow of God is going to be so. Give us God to accept your word, Father God, whether it be reproof or whether it be reproof, whether it be correction, whatever it is, Father God, let us not disregard it, God. Seven that stubborn spirit on today, Father God. Right now, God, because we go to the wrong people, Father God, and we try to get justification for our actions, God. Hold oh, my mind, dear Uncle C. But you are the one that justified when you sent your son Jesus. You are the one that justified us all, Father God, in the name of Jesus when you change your blood. Oh, God, I'm asking you to heal us in our minds. I'm asking you to heal us in our hearts. I'm asking you to heal us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In any and every area of our lives, Father. I'm asking you to heal us on today, God. I'm asking you to complete us on today, God. I'm asking you to open us up into your will, Father God. Because we have tried to do it on our own, God. But it's just so hard. Some of that sexual perversion in our lives, in our minds. I'm asking you to sever it right now, Father God. That it will not cause us, Father God, to do anything that's contrary to your will or to your way. I'm asking you to help us with our sexual identity on today, God. I'm asking you to help us in that role playing on today. Oh, God, give us a completion inside of you, God. We don't want to do these seeds, Father God, that causes us, Lord, in the name of Jesus to be wayward and doubtful in your will. Oh, God, but we need some help. We need some help on today, Father God, because we know that your word is true, God. I'm asking you to help us to tear down the walls and the barriers, Father God. Even a division in the family. Even a division in the marriage. Even the divisions in the home. I'm asking you to help us on today, God. Because you said that you are God of reconciliation. And let us join together again, God. And let us not be so quick to talk about one another, Father God. Oh God, let us help one another, Father God. Give us a heart of compassion. Give us a heart of piety. Give us a heart of love on today, Father God. That we may be able to forgive. But we need the heart of absolutions. Help us out today, God. To embrace our divine destinies in you and stop walking crooked. I see crooked. 
I literally see the school for it. It's as if I see your feet going backwards. Help us on today, Father God, to be upright and holy. Put your holiness inside of us. Consider every prayer that we got on the altar, of God. Consider every prayer that's inside of our hearts that we never even spoke. Consider every prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus that we have even did. Suffer that spirit of greed. Suffer that spirit of antagonism. Suffer it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That we won't be so selfish, but we'll be more selfless. Help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. To simply get concerned about our salvation and just say, yes, Lord. Your will, God. Let your will be done within our lives, God. Because it seems as if we don't build up these barriers and these partitions, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And it of course, shut down. It has caused us, Father God, to get into that place, Father God, that we have simply forgotten, Father God, in the name of Jesus and knowing, God, that you are the way. Oh, God, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, and release your love. Release your hope, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And take all this other stuff away from us, Father God, that is causing us, Father God, to be and live in a wayward state. Oh, God, I'm asking you to help us, Father God, even in our unbelief. Because there's so many times, God, that you have said a thing, promised a thing, God, that simply spoke a thing. And because we know that your word is true, Father God, and it will go out and perform that thing that you have already spoken. I'm asking you to help them in their unbelief. Let your will be done within their lives on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And tear down the walls and the barriers of defeat. Tear down the walls and the barriers of depression. Tear down the walls and the barriers of lost hope. Tear down that lying spirit on today. God, whether they lie to others or even to their own selves. Tear it down right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Remove that spirit of dishonesty on today, God. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, God, and to simply take all this stuff away. Take it away from us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we need you, God, and we need you in totality, God. We need you in totality on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because there's no other way, Father God, that we will simply be set free of you. Help us on today. Heal the broken heart. Lift up the hung down head. Cover us today, God. Cover us today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And take away all that stuff, Father God, that causes us to be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Help us on today, God. We're just going to simply say yes, God. We're going to say yes, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we need you to follow us. We need you to follow us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because there's no other way, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we're going to be able to be set free from this stuff. There's no other way that we're going to be able, Father God, to get away from it all. Oh, God, because it's so prevalent in our lives, God. And we don't want to be flamboyant, God. We don't want to continue to walk around, Father God, thinking and believing we got it together, God, and we are simply hell bound. Oh, God, save us from our own selves. We just want to say yes, Lord. Just say yes, Lord. My soul says yes to you, God. My soul says yes to you, God. Yes to your will and yes to your way. I don't want to continue to go through it by myself. I don't want to continue to think that I can work it out and even figure it out. Oh, God, because we know that God in your course, shut me to the local see that you are the only one with the solution. We know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask you to even imagine, God. We know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are able to do these things. Oh, God, and we just want to bless you and lift you up. We want to bless you and lift you up, Father God, because you said that if we lift you up, you would draw all men unto your God. So we're going to cast all our cares down at your feet right now, God. We're going to give you all this stuff, Father God, and ask you to consider the prayers that we put on our altar. We're going to ask you to consider the prayers that we got inside of our hearts that we got in your ghost shot now. We're going to ask you to consider the prayers that we've been on the wall, God. We're going to ask you to consider these prayers on today, Father God, and remove any hidden motives, God. Remove the prayers, Father God, that's not useful in your vineyard, God. Oh, God, we're going to ask you to simply consider these prayers on today, Father God, because, Lord, we cannot do anything without you, Jesus. We can't do anything without you, so I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, that we may understand, Father God, that all these things could only happen through you. Help us to understand these things, God. Let us know, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that nothing can be done without you because you are the author and the finisher of this thing, God. You wrote our story, God, even 
before we came into existence. Give us a heart to accept the plan that you got for our lives, Father God. And even though, God, we wanted to go another way, God, give us a heart to accept your way. Help us on today, Father God, to realize, Lord, that you are the only one that we could depend on. Thank you, Jesus. Dependable, I ask you to answer these prayers and all others in your son. Jesus' name. Amen. It doesn't matter amen. What comes amen. My way you may be seated if you want. Thank you, Jesus. We need to realize that He's the only one that we have to stand on. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we're going through. If you want individual prayer, you will come stand in the middle of the aisle. And we will pray for you individually. It doesn't matter what comes my way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you want individual prayer, please stand in the middle of our Open up their hearts, God, that they may receive simply what you have for them. Thank you. 
Yes, yeah. 